Welcome to day three of the Early Childhood Leadership Bootcamp training. Today we're talking about creating the roadmap for accountability. And so, um, sorry, first let me introduce myself. Um, as some people are showing up today for the first time, my name is Connie Wolshansky. I'm an early childhood strategist and leadership coach. Um, I work with preschool directors and owners to help them build a school of excellence. These are my four beautiful children. Uh, for those of you that have been here on the past two nights, you get to see my kids every single night. Um, I started my career 11 years ago where I worked in Preschool of the Arts, which is a Reggio-inspired school in New York City. I left Preschool of the Arts and I moved on to get my master's in early childhood and special education at Mercy College, and two years ago, I started my own company, Discover Ed, um, which I've been doing since, helping preschool directors and owners build their school cultures and build a school of excellence. So I'm really excited to be here today. Um, oopsie, wrong one. Um, today, we're going to be talking about how to help your teachers learn from their mistakes. I'm going to talk about my ninja trick to help staff members meet their deadlines, and the most powerful strategy for accountability with staff and your admin team. So from these three things, which is your biggest pain point right now? Is it that your teachers don't learn from their mistakes? Is it that you have a really hard time helping your people meet their deadlines? Or do you struggle with accountability with your staff and your admin team? So let me know in the comment section or in the chat box, which area are you struggling with most? Hello, Sharon. Hello, Anne. Nice to see you here. Glad you're able to make it live. Um, so, yes, let me know in the comment section which one is your biggest goal right now, or do you find the biggest gap? Meeting the deadlines. All right. Hi, Nicole. Nice to see you. Um, what about you, Nicole? Which one is the biggest place where you want to focus on? Dia says, um, helping teachers learn from their mistakes, staff meeting their deadlines. Awesome. Well, and you are in the right place. And Dia and Sharon, we are going to dig right in. So here we go. Um, so let's get started with how do you create accountability? Okay. When your staff are used to things sliding by and not taking ownership, it's a really long way to create accountability. It's not something that happens overnight. Okay. And what's really important to understand is that accountability is a practice. Okay. Just like being a great parent, being a supportive spouse, um, healthy eating, um, being physically fit. It's not a one time, one and done occurrence that you work out once or you work out for a month and now you're fit for life. It's a practice. And so accountability with your team and the, in your culture is a practice. Okay. But you could do it just like you could do anything else but you need the right strategies to implement and in the correct order to get the results that you want and that you're really looking for. So I have dozens of strategies when it comes to accountability that you can implement depending on your teacher's personality, skill set, mindset, and years of experience in the school. And it's really important to understand this because what works for one teacher does not work for another. And so you really have to know your staff and have an arsenal of strategies to pull out from where your teachers are struggling with accountability based on their personality, on their individual competency level, their mindset, and how many years they've actually been in the school, which means how many years have you been accidentally setting up the pathway of this poor accountability is going to be the flip side of how you're going to have to respond to it. So I always like to give this example of the bride who meets with the wedding planner and she sits down with the planner and on the first meeting, the wedding planner tells her, okay, so here's what you need in order to get married. You need a gown, you need veil, you need a shoes, you need to get your hair done, your makeup, an apartment, furniture, pots and pans and cutlery. You need to set a wedding date, you need a hall, you need a food menu, you need desserts, you need drinks at the bar, you need a band, photographer, a video crew. So this is everything that you need um, and we'll check in um, like two days before your wedding and you'll let me know if you got everything done. Great. I'll see you then. Um, that's never going to happen. Okay. A wedding planner is never, ever going to do that. They're going to do one thing at a time, break things down for them in bite sized chunks and segments, because that's the way to actually ensure 
that the person actually gets, that the bride actually gets it done, right? So the problem is, is that as directors and owners, we do the exact same thing with our teachers. We dump a whole bunch of things on their plate and then we just check in right before it's due, hoping and crossing our fingers, oh, please, please make sure that it's ready. So one of the strategies when it comes to um, accountability and making sure that they meet their deadlines is short early conversations, which is having early conversations with the teacher on what is the progress on this project, okay? Breaking it down for them in bite-sized chunks so they aren't overwhelmed. So that's the next one, which is the meet the deadline framework, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But the strategy of short, early conversations is extremely powerful. So after a teacher says, okay, I'm going to submit the progress reports by Monday, by Wednesday, on Monday, you could check in with her and say, what is the progress on this project? Um, because now you're having a quick, early conversation with her, checking in on the project so that it's not Wednesday. You're like, why isn't it done yet? So, and the bigger the project, the more mini conversations you're going to have until the project deadline. So tell me if that makes sense in the comment section, short, early conversations. And for those of you that are in Zoom, let me know in the chat box. see here. Awesome. Okay. Great. So, oopsie. Okay. So now let's go into the meet the deadline framework. Yeah. Early conversations are important. Um, the meet the deadline framework is a special framework that are created, which helps teachers meet their deadlines. And I'm not going to go into it here because this is something that's unique for the inner circle, but I am going to show you um, what are some of the results that directors have gotten by implementing the meet the deadline framework? I just want to say that I love the meeting the deadline form, which is the meet the deadline framework. I wanted to remind my teachers to have their parent invitations out. To my surprise, they'd already sent it out last week before our deadline. The gifts are nearly fridlish. All we need to do is make the scenery. It's just nice to know that if you hold everyone in the same standard, that these goals can be met. And another director said, who would have thought that a piece of paper could solve so many problems? That is the power of the meet the deadline framework. Her teachers had it ready before the deadline. Okay, here's another one. I got a lot of good feedback from my staff regarding the meet the deadline framework, specifically that they each have a piece of paper. They each have a piece of the winter celebrations broken down into manageable chunks. It's something we can use for many more things in the future. Thank you, Hani. Here's something else. After I watched this, I got in touch with one of my teachers who's had a hard time handing in her curriculum in general. I asked her why. She said it's because she doesn't like to do it. I asked her, what if you had a piece of paper that would outline everything that I've written on it with deadlines? Would that be helpful? She said yes. Tomorrow I'm meeting with her to go over this form, and now hopefully she'll get in her curriculum on time every month, already in action. Okay? This is the power. This is just three of them. I have like a ton of them that I didn't even like put up here. But this is the power of really using a framework that works. It's not anymore hoping and praying that your teachers submit it. You have something that actually works. Um, so, and the boot camp is recorded, so you get access to the recording. It's in the Facebook group for a little bit. It's not going to be here forever. Um, directors in the inner circle get lifetime access to all the stuff that I create. So, um, all of these like recordings and stuff like that, it goes into their, um, it goes into the, to the members area. Um, okay, great. So that's the meet the deadline framework is just to really understand that there's so much power in using an actual framework. Okay. So let's move on now to some of the daily activity. Oh, sorry. One second. Yeah. 
So yeah, uh, two days ago, we spoke a little bit about some of the daily activities that you have, right? And people wrote things like reading parents, curriculum with teachers, tuition, enrollment, registration, parent communication, individual children's needs, new projects, parents' events, all kinds of stuff like that. So I want to share a quick little trick with you on how to make sure that you're leveraging your time efficiently. Um, Nicole says, what if forms are interpreted as more work, something else to fill out? No, 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 no. The meet the deadline framework is not like that um, because I sh walk you through exactly how to introduce that to your staff at a staff meeting or one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and it's actually met with um, excitement because now they actually have a framework of how they're supposed to get things done. Teachers, surprisingly, don't want to let you down. As many times as they do, they actually really don't want to. They just don't have the skill set of breaking it down because they lack those executive functioning skills. And when you give them something that's going to help them actually do it, it's not going to be met with, oh my God, this is more work. It's, oh my God, this is finally going to change it. And I could actually submit the newsletter on time. Okay. Teachers don't like it. They don't like to submit it late and be scolded every single week. Surprisingly, people like to be liked right? People have this need to want to fit in. Um, and so it's typically not met with that. It's met with, um, thanks, this is a great thing that we can use now, right? But again, you have to present it in the right way. Um, so how do you get everything done, right? So I have tons of strategies, things like block and tackle, themes, teacher matrix, Asana, Google Calendar, Pile Up Zone, one, two, three framework. These are just a bucket of strategies to make your day serve you and stop running around and help everyone else all day and then only tap your to-do list when everyone else leaves the building. Um, I'm gonna share with you one of these frameworks today, but just so you know, here's what one director said just two weeks ago. You guys, I just heard my director say to her assistant, this time blocking thing is really working. I'm no expert, but I'm really getting it. I'm so proud of them, okay? These are real things that are going on in the inner circle. Like it's not just like quotes or like these are screenshots of conversations that are happening in the Facebook group from people, from real directors and owners that are implementing these frameworks in their school. So the one, two, three framework is a great framework to use for your admin team um, or your assistant or your secretary, even for yourself if you're, you know, just working on your own. So one is when you give a project to your admin team. So let's say you tell, give them a whole list of to-do lists. Like you need to buy new toner for the printer. You need to print out all these copies, um, laminate all of this kind of stuff and edit five newsletters. Okay. Now in your head, you know that editing the newsletters are the most important task because of course they need to be get, they need to be submitted by the end of the day. But in your assistant's mind, that's her least favorite thing that she wants to do. So she's going to do that last. She's really excited about Googling toners for the printer. So she spends the whole morning searching for toner. And then at the end of the day, she's like, oh my God, I got to go. I didn't have time to do the newsletters. You didn't give me enough time. You put so much on my plate. And then she gives you all these lame ass excuses. Meanwhile, she just spent four hours looking for toner when she should be using that time to edit the newsletters. Resonate or not? Let me know, um, let me know with a like or an emoji actually in the Facebook group um, if this happens to you. If you give your assistant something to do and she kind of ends up doing everything else that's not as important. Yes. Let's see who else. So the way to break it down is when you give her that list of projects, you tell her, okay, the newsletters is a one. That means it has to get done now. The toner 
Um, no. So the, the laminating is a two. It needs to get done by the end of the day. And the toner is a three. You need to get it done by the end of the week. Okay. This is just one of the strategies that works to get your at your team aligned. If you want to build your school, you need to stop doing things that other people can do. You need to learn how to delegate. Another powerful thing that we talk about in the inner circle, how to delegate, because it's not enough to just know, oh yeah, I really need to delegate. Um, you need to know your personal strengths and weaknesses so that you can leverage that and that you can actually learn how to start delegating better. Yeah, we, we're all guilty of that. Um, hold on a second. I just lost the Facebook group. Um, let's see here. Meet every morning, set priorities for the day, go from there, regroup as needed. Best strategy ever. Nicole says, yep, familiar situation. I'm guilty of this sometimes. Yeah, we're all guilty of doing that. Um, so yeah, so this is another powerful strategy, the one, two, three framework. So now let's move on to how to help your people learn from their mistakes. Okay. There are seven different ways to help your staff learn from their mistakes. And there's a very specific order in doing it. I'm going to share with you the first step. Okay. The first step is compared to the standards. What are the standards in our school? Okay. So for example, one of the things that we talk about in the inner circle is not to have policies and expectations, but to have school standards. So let's say there's a standard in the school that parents get a call back within 24 hours of calling a teacher and they can expect a teacher to call back. And let's say the teacher only called back three days later. So you want to call on the teacher and talk to her about the mistake that happened, right? So you're going to compare it to the standard and you're going to say, okay, our school standard is that a parent can expect to call back within 24 hours. This parent got a call back three days later. What happened? Notice how I didn't say you in the sentence. Okay, so I'm going to repeat the sentence that I said. Our school standard is that a parent can expect a call within 24 hours. The parent was called back three days later. What happened? The way that you structure the sentence, this removes all blame. Because when you start saying you, you back a teacher into a corner and you give her zero exit. The minute you don't give a person an exit, she's going to dig her heels in and she's going to give you every excuse under the sun as long as you don't shift the blame to her. Helping a person learn from their mistakes is not about positioning blame onto the person. It's about framing and giving context to what happened, what the mistake was, and how we move forward. And that's why you have to remove any you comment in that sentence so the person can actually feel like they're not being backed in a corner, but they have room to breathe and think about how they can move forward. Yeah, Suzanne, um, this framework is awesome. The one, two, three framework. Um, again, I release content, you know, slowly, but um, you can private message me about that. I'd be happy to share that little video clip with you on the one, two, three framework. So um, ping me privately and I'll, I'll take care of that for you, Susan. No problem. Um, okay, let us move on. So. We spoke about how to help teachers learn from their mistakes, the ninja trick, which is the short early conversations and the meet the deadline framework and the powerful strategy for accountability with your team, which is the one, two, three framework. Um, uh, so what are our next steps? Okay. We covered a lot in this three day boot camp. Okay. We covered a ton on day one where we spoke about the three C's on day two. We spoke about environment and culture and you could take a ton of what I taught you and actually start seeing results in your school. A lot of people who joined the boot camp training last round also got a ton of value and started getting results in their school. But here's the deal is that if you really want to get out of the cycle, you need to create new habits. Okay. And I say this all the time, good intentions, never replace the right skills. Okay. Being a leader requires it's just a completely different skill set. That's the bottom line. And we're starting the new year. How are you going to go into this new year? How are you going to go into January of 2018? Are you going in equipped with a complete backpack that as you climb the mountain, you have the tools and resources with you? 
And as you stop at every single base camp, you have what you need to unpack and be able to refuel yourself and continue climbing that mountain. So again, yesterday I spoke about the inner circle and the day before, which is a small group of high level directors working together all year. The trainings consistently build your skill set, and the bi monthly calls ensure that you're accountable to moving the needle forward of what you need to do. We have a vault that gives action steps that you need to take. And the newsroom gives you motivation for yourself and your staff, which are the done for you emails. The Facebook group is your trust and support system throughout this entire process. The entire inner circle is, has built in accountability. This is not about consuming content. This is about taking action. My incredible mentors and coaches and other incredible people come in to continue to support you. And I structure the program in a way to give you enough of what you need to take action, but not too much to overwhelm you. It's the success formula to really become an amazing leader in your school. We also have the founding members price, which is grandfathered into this price forever, as long as you remain a member, and Effective Meeting Blueprint, which is my self-study mini course on how to plan, lead, and succeed with every kind of meeting. So, where do you actually sign up, okay? So, you sign up, this is an application only process because we are vetting um, everyone that comes in. Let me just drop the link in here. Um, everything you put out gives me something I need and what I could use right away. So Susan is actually one of our members in the inner circle and she just said, everything that you put out gives me something I need and what I can use right away. That is the way that the structure works. Like I'm constantly anticipating what are the fires that are going to be happening? And we want to put those fires out right away. We want you to build an extremely strong foundation in your school to be an extremely effective leader. Susan, thank you so much for sharing that because first of all, it's amazing to have you in the group. And second of all, this, this is exactly what, you know, what it's all about in that kind of way. Um, so I want to talk, uh, just for one more. So I actually just wanted to share, um, Talia is a director that I've worked with for a very long time. And, by delegating tasks to her staff and to coworkers, she's freed up 30% of her time to concentrate on other important areas. Imagine freeing up 30% of your time to be able to focus on tasks that are so much more important and valuable to build and grow the school. So it's super important to understand that you need to be building that skill set and fine tuning it consistently. And it's not enough um, just to show up um, and hope for the best, you know, in that kind of way. So I also just want to say um, that, and I sent this in the email that went out today, um, anyone that fills out an application by Friday um, and granted that, you know, you're accepted and everything and you join the inner circle, um, we're actually doing a special bonus where you'll be able to hop on a call with me personally. Um, and I'm going to help you map out your 2018 strategy for this, for the, for the school year. So from January of 2018 until the end of the school year, we'll map out together. What is that strategy going to be? Create that diagnostic for you. Um, and there's only a handful of those spots. Obviously, I don't have infinite amount of hours. So if you're interested in joining the inner circle, um, I really suggest filling out that application, um, submitting that so I can read it and get on the phone with you um, and see if you're a good fit for the program and see if it's something that you really want to um, invest in and move forward with with your school. Um, so let me know in the comment section. Um,